in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. The jobs they hold might otherwise be held by citizens or legal immigrants. The public service they use impose burdens on our taxpayers. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by hiring a record number of new border guards, by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before, by cracking down on illegal hiring, by barring welfare benefits to illegal aliens. In the budget I will present to you, we will try to do more to speed the deportation of illegal aliens who are arrested for crimes, to better identify illegal aliens in the workplace as recommended by the commission headed by former Congresswoman Barbara Jordan. We are a nation of immigrants, but we are also a nation of laws. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. There's no question that a lot of those young people were sent to the United States because they were told back in the countries they came from that once they got here, if they were kids, they could stay. So we just got to work through all this. But I, I think in general, what the president proposed is good. But we need to pass the comprehensive immigration reform legislation. And I hope he will get this, this money he's asked for because some of these kids may be eligible to stay under our laws because of the circumstances they face. I would build a great wall, and nobody builds walls better than me, believe me. And I'll build them very inexpensively. This was President Trump's campaign announcement in June of 2015. Since then, President Trump's efforts to build his long-touted wall have run into political realities. He doesn't have the funding, and he couldn't reach a compromise. Look, I made it so, so clear to the president that there is not going to be a wall. And his voter base is beginning to take notice. Right now, if I were a, a betting woman, I don't think we're getting a wall. <laughs> so Trump instead has tried to use a series of distractions to get around the fact that his border barrier is running behind. President Trump had eight wall prototypes built near the border, but that's where construction has stalled. These monoliths stand as a $20 million testament to his ambitions, but not much more. President Trump has repeatedly stated that construction is already underway for the wall. We need the wall. We've started building the wall. We're going to have the wall. We've already started building it. We've started building our wall. I'm so proud of it. But it's almost entirely routine maintenance being done on existing sections of the wall, plus 33 miles of new fencing. When efforts to fund the wall failed, President Trump said he wanted the National Guard deployed, a move he said was significant. Until we can have a wall and proper security, we're going to be guarding our border with the military. That's a big step. We really haven't done that before, or certainly not very much before. But this is not a dramatic move. Both President Obama and President Bush did the same during their terms. Trump suggested the military could pay for the wall with part of their budget, a proposal with few backers. We can't rob money and resources from the military that so desperately needs them uh, at a time of growing international crisis. President Trump said he was willing to compromise for wall funding in the 2018 budget bill in exchange for protecting young undocumented immigrants, known as DACA recipients. The Democrats would not do it. But in reality, Trump was the one who ended the DACA program in the first place. Trump has tried various ways of getting Mexico to pay, including a border tax on Mexican goods, or through renegotiations of the North American Free Trade Agreement, also known as NAFTA. But Mexico has yet to pay a dime. Isn't it true at this point that Mexico is just not going to pay for that wall? Uh, I'm not going to go beyond what the president's already said. I think he still has uh, plans to look at potential ways for that to happen. But this kind of hedging is a far cry from Trump's original promise. I will have Mexico pay for that wall. No more get out of jail free word. cards. No more lawlessness. The United States will not be a migrant camp.
What this administration is doing is inhumane. It is inconsistent with our American values. It's barbaric. This, I do think, ought to be addressed. And I say it's very strongly the Democrats' fault. We would like to fix these loopholes, and if Democrats want to get serious about it instead of playing political games, they're welcome to come here and sit down with the president and actually do something about it. We cannot and will not encourage people to bring their children or other children uh, to the country unlawfully by giving them immunity in the process. I have not been directed to do that for purposes of deterrence, no. My decision has been that anyone who breaks the law will be prosecuted. Our administration has had the same position since we started uh, on day one that we were going to enforce the law. Due to the Apostle Paul and his clear and wise command in Romans uh, 13 to obey the laws of the government because God has ordained, ordained the government for his purpose. The image that I want of this country is an immigration system that secures our borders and upholds our humanitarian ideals. Congress needs to fix it. Oh, that yes. That's Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen. She's trying to deflect criticism aimed at the Trump administration for separating families who cross the U.S.-Mexico border illegally. Critics say it's a heartless tactic. Nielsen has tried to argue that they're simply following the law. It's not the first time that she's been in the crosshairs. She was close to resigning in May after Trump berated her at a cabinet meeting because he thought she wasn't adequately securing the nation's borders. Good afternoon. In a press briefing soon after, Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked about Nielsen's rumored desire to resign. Does the president have confidence in Secretary Nielsen? Uh, as we've said many times before, if the president no longer has confidence in a cabinet member, he'll let you know. So how did Nielsen get here? She joined the newly formed Transportation Security Administration after 9-11 and devised national response plans for things like terrorist incidents and extreme weather events. Fast forward to the Trump administration. She worked under John Kelly when he headed Homeland Security, and then again when he moved to the White House to be chief of staff. Nielsen was known as the gatekeeper to the gatekeeper, a no-nonsense policy wonk who helped instill discipline in the chaotic West Wing. Nielsen's November confirmation hearing to take over DHS yes. was mostly deferential, but there were some bumps. I believe in reuniting children with their families. If their families are not here, and that then are you saying you would deport those children to reunite them with their families who have actually put those children in a process of fleeing violence and they want those children to be safe and in the United States? Well, in that case, I would certainly want to work with you to understand more about the implications. Thank yes, you. That's an issue she's back to dealing with today, though now she's less conciliatory. Here is the bottom line. DHS is no longer ignoring the law. We are enforcing the laws as they exist on the books. As long as illegal entry remains a criminal offense, DHS will not look the other way. Those are the only two options, totally open borders or criminal prosecution for lawbreaking. And you want to be able to do that. We don't want people pouring into our country. We they said, sir, we'd like to hire about five or 6,000 more judges. Five or 6,000? Now, can you imagine the graft that must take place? You're all small business owners. So I know you can't imagine a thing like that would happen. When countries abuse us by sending their people up, not their best, we're not going to give any more aid to those countries. Why the hell should we? Why should we? So we have a house that's getting ready to finalize an immigration package that they're going to brief me on later and that I'm going to make changes to. Democrats love open borders. Let the whole world come in. Let the whole world. MS-13 gang members from all over the place. Come on in. We have open borders. And they view that possibly intelligently accept that it's destroying our country. They view that as potential voters. Someday, they're going to vote for Democrats. This image has become a powerful representation of the Trump administration's crackdown on immigration. A two-year-old girl sobbing as U.S. Border Patrol agents searched her mother. If you cross the border unlawfully, then we will prosecute you. If you are smuggling a child, 
then we will prosecute you. And that child may be separated from you as required by law. The Trump White House's tactic of systematically separating migrant families is a dramatic shift. There have been cases of families being separated under the previous two administrations, but it's always been the exception, not the rule. That said, Trump's crackdowns are happening against the backdrop of more than a decade of stepped-up enforcement at the southern border. In 2005, President George W. Bush launched Operation Streamline along the Texas border. He was responding to a spike in apprehensions there. The program called for criminally prosecuting all migrants. We're going to get control of our borders. We're going to make this country safer for all our citizens. The idea of zero tolerance took root under Bush, and it's what Trump has used to model his policy after. The Bush-era program meant that migrants who were caught in certain border states were put through the criminal system, not civil immigration courts. It made exceptions for adults traveling with children, but others were ushered through mass trials aimed at deporting them quickly. It's a practice that's still around today. One of the things we committed to do was end catch and release by the end of fiscal year 2006. Under this policy, migrants were held until their deportation hearing, and that meant an increase in beds at private detention centers. In 2014, President Barack Obama declared a crisis at the southwest border after a surge of unaccompanied minors, mostly from Central America. We now have an actual humanitarian crisis on the border that only underscores the need to drop the politics and fix our immigration system once and for all. During that child migrant crisis, the Obama administration also focused on deporting people quickly and put some through criminal proceedings. But it chose to hold families together in administrative, not criminal, detention. The Obama administration also set up makeshift overflow facilities. And we saw similar images back then of adults and children behind chain link fences draped in thermal blankets. Now, Trump is reportedly taking it a step further and considering makeshift tent cities to detain minors caught at the border. The Trump administration says it's now merely enforcing the letter of the law, but images of children in detention have made it hard to sell it in political terms, and humanitarian ones, too. Um, as I said last week, we do not want children taken away from their parents. We can enforce our immigration laws without breaking families apart. The administration says it wants Congress to act, and we are. Tomorrow, the House will vote on legislation to keep families together. Under this bill, when people are being prosecuted for illegally crossing the border, families will remain together under DHS custody throughout the length of their legal proceedings. Additional funding is also going to be made available so that DHS has sufficient resources to house and care for families during this entire process. Bottom line is this. We are going to take action to keep families together while we enforce our immigration laws. The law should not have our government choose between enforcing our borders, enforcing our laws, securing our borders, and keeping families together. That's ridiculous. It's a ridiculous choice. We're signing an executive order. I consider it to be a very important executive order. It's about keeping families together, while at the same time being sure that we have a very powerful, very strong border, and border security will be equal, if not greater, than previously. So we're going to have strong, very strong borders, but we're going to keep the families together. I didn't like the sight or the feeling of families being separated, and it continues to be a zero tolerance. We have zero tolerance for people that enter our country illegally. You're going to have a lot of happy people. Thank you. Thank you. Why did you wait so long to This has been going on for 60 years. 60 years. Nobody's taken care of it. Nobody's had the political courage to take care of it, but we're going to take care of it. It's been going on 
It's been going on for a long time.